okay hi guys so in this lecture we'll be discussing the phase equilibri equilibria for general substances so let's continue so for general substances first we will see the nature of graph okay so this is our graph we can have something like this okay this is pressure graph and this is temperature axis this is pressure axis and this is temperature axis so for general substances we have something like this graph okay so this is solid phase this is liquid this is gaseous okay so this curve is about x any substance x converting from solid to liquid this is about liquid to gas and this is about solid to gas okay so here we can see that if you look at it so suppose this was p1 which is nothing but the freezing point at temperature t1 okay and if we increase the pressure the temperature also increases okay so we can say that as pressure increases this implies freezing point also increases unlike the case of water where freezing point decreases because of increase in pressure similarly if we look at when we increase the pressure what happens to the boiling point boiling point also boiling point also increases why because initially the temperature was t3 and now it is t4 and as t4 is more than t3 we can see that as pressure increases boiling point also increases so this is a general rule for phase equilibria of any general substance that on increasing the pressure both freezing point and boiling point will increase now let's look at some of the reaction where we have simple xs converting into xl and we note that delta h for this type of reaction or this reaction is positive this implies that what are the favorable conditions for melting of x so if we want to check what are favorable conditions for melting of x so favorable conditions would be low pressure uh, first of all as it is a endothermic process first we write high temperature which is obvious here now let us comment on whether we need high pressure or low pressure so for melting of x we mean that we want the substance to be in liquid phase so that means when we are having high temperature we should have low pressure why because if we again so this is uh, some kind of a messy graph i will again read the graph so this is pressure axis this is temperature axis this is the nature of the graph okay so here what we see is if we have to increase the te increase the temperature so let's say initial temperature was this and we increase the temperature to let's say t2 now what should be the case for pressure so let's say initial pressure was we have this solid liquid and gaseous state initial pressure was this this as the p initial as the substance was existing existing in the solid phase but now we want the substance to be existing in liquid phase so as a result somewhere here here or here uh, the pressure should be dropped down so that it the substance converts itself from solid state to a liquid state or in better terms it should the pressure and temperature should somewhere intersect in the liquid phase so we have to drop down the pressure so this would be the final pressure so high temperature and low pressure so these are the favorable conditions for melting of x okay so let's say for an example that carbon s which is graphite let's say is converting into 
carbon S which is diamond okay and obviously delta H for this reaction is positive and we know that so this is just for a factual purpose that's that this is actually something like di density of diamond is more than density of graphite okay so this is just analogous to the case of water so just remember this that density of diamond is more than density of graphite and then just like I said that it is analogous to this case is analogous to case of water where density of water at 4 degrees Celsius or other density of water would, was greater than density of ice at let's say 0 degrees Celsius both for 0 degrees Celsius but the density of water was more than density of ice so in this case you can consider density of water as density of diamond which actually is more than the density of ice or density of graphite in this case so I'm just um, setting up some analogy here so that it's it becomes better for you to correlate this anytime in near future okay so then if we talk about the favorable conditions favorable conditions for formation of diamond so as we discussed that what are the favorable conditions for forming H2L from H2S or favorable conditions for the melting of liquid or metal mel melting of water from solid state so we discussed that as it is a delta H positive uh, reaction we need high temperature and we also discussed that it needs high pressure as well because we saw that in the phase equilibria graph and as I said that this case is also analogous to the melting of water or conversion of solid water into liquid water so as this case of diamond uh, of conversion of uh, graphite into diamond is, con is similar to or, or analogous to conversion of solid water into liquid water hence the favorable conditions for formation of diamond would also be high temperature and high pressure okay so this is just for the factual thing i hope you remember this as it is very important important concept a very very important concept okay so next let us discuss solubility of gas in liquid solvent in liquid solvent Rather, this is not an example this is a concept so I'm writing star here okay so we have this vessel in which we are applying some pressure on top of it okay and this is liquid water or any substance X not just water let's say this is x x and this has some vapor density which has which is x g okay so what are the favorable conditions for better solubility of gas in any liquid solvent so it can be x or this is liquid not s this is liquid or any on a, any another uh, solvent as well uh, we are considering both the cases so for generality I am just writing any solvent any general solvent which is YL okay so what is what, what are the favorable conditions for better solubility of gas favorable conditions for better solubility of gas So if you look at the graph then what does the graph says or if you have some analogy here then we can answer this. So let us look at the same graph as that graph is the source of truth for us. So this is for graph for any general substance which is something like this. This is solid state. This is liquid and this is gas. So now we know that we, we now want gas to be merged with solid so we we are just interested in this curve for this particular example okay so now we want gas to be merged in some solid 
okay so now we want that suppose uh, for this we may we may want uh, our intersection of uh, pressure and temperature axis to be in this phase and initially we we are existing in gaseous phase and we want this gas phase to be emerged in the solid phase in the liquid phase i beg your pardon so this was the initial case now what we want is we want some intersection to be here so this was t initial this was p initial now we want the intersection of these two points somewhere in liquid phase so what we'll do is what would we want we would want the temperature to decrease and as this goes to infinite we, we want that maximum probability would be there for in for the intersection thing so we want the pressure to be increased so that we get the maximum probability of gas gaseous phase merging itself into liquid phase or better solubility of the gas in liquid solvent so we want the gas to be in liquid phase or the intersection of pressure and temperature for the gas into the liquid phase so we want the temperature to be decreased and pressure to be increased so finally what we will have is somewhere intersection here okay so favorable conditions would be low temperature and high pressure so if you take the example of you know soft drinks okay some cold drinks in which co2 is dissolved or is aimed to be dissolved in that sugar water okay so what are the favorable conditions we we look at many of the stores out there in the market that this the the coke bottle is actually stored in freezer or deep refrigerators so that temperature is lowered and at the time of filling of co2 gas in sugar water uh, whenever we open the knob of the bottle then co2 comes out with high pressure that means that initially the co2 was filled it with high pressure and now it is stored at low temperature so this confirms our fact from the real world application as well this confirms our answer okay so now let's discuss uh, important concept which is nothing but a relative humidity so relative humidity is nothing but partial pressure of h2og divided by vapor pressure of h2l so please remember this formula this very important formula and percentage of relative humidity you can easily calculate by divide by multiplying partial pressure of h2og uh, multiplying it with 100 and dividing by vapor pressure of h2l okay so with this we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we'll be talking about the states of matter and then we'll be seeing gaseous state so till then good luck and good bye